Welcome everyone. It's so wonderful to see you all out here on this really cold day. Um, we have a really busy schedule because we are on Zoom and we have an hour and 20 minutes. Um, I'd like to say that it's really an uh, honor to be with you in this room. We are here because, as you know, Holtec has, Holtec, the company that is decommissioning Pilgrim, has said they are ready to dump a million gallons of radioactivity into Cape Cod Bay. And that is outrageous and that must stop. <clears throat> we are standing here to protect our families, our, um, the economic health of our communities in our coastal area and the marine life of our rivers in our bay. Um, you know, just like the tobacco industry that created a scientific controversy to distort and confuse the situation about the health of smoking cigarettes, and we know that was just a big lie. Well, Holtec is doing the same thing here. They are trying to tell us that a little radiation isn't gonna harm anyone. And we're here to say, no, you're not dumping in the bay. Holtec, we are, we, you must, you, I'm sorry, Holtec, you must not dump in our bay, and we are demanding that you immediately withdraw those plans for dumping. We have the community to speak. You said you came to our town and our area with openness and transparency. You said you would listen to the people in the communities and what they wanted and how they wanted this decommissioning to go. And you are failing us right now because you have that plan in place. So we need you to stop it and tonight the community is gonna speak. So we are gonna start with Melissa Ferretti. She's the chairwoman of the Herring Pond Wampanoag Tribe, and she will start off. Thank you, Melissa. Good evening. It's traditional that we start with a Wampanoag prayer. I'm gonna share with you a prayer for every time Manat ka wana nahi creator and ancestors. Katapatanamu wachi wami tiakwanish. I thank you for all things. Katapatanamu wachi kisak. I thank you for the sky. Katapatanamu wachi anakwasak. I thank you for the stars. Katapatanamu wachi aki. I thank you for the land. Katapatanamu wachi sipuash. I thank you for the rivers. Katapatanamu wachi katahanash. I thank you for the oceans. Katapatanamu wachi wami awahasak. I thank you for all creatures. Katapatanamu wachi wami natonkwasak. I thank you for all my relations. Ananama nian namanat wipi wanikak. Help us to see what is only good. Ananama anian asinat wipi sompwak. Help us to do what is right. Aho, it is done. Thank you. I've been asked uh, to offer uh, today's land acknowledgement. Today, land acknowledgements are used by Native peoples and non-Native peoples to recognize the first peoples of this land, those who were the original stewards to this place which we all now live. Today I will share a much larger, a, a condensed version of a much larger story of acknowledgement. So today we give thanks to this sacred place at Patuxet, what is known today as Plymouth. This sacred land that lies beneath our feet is at the heart of what we call the Wampanoag Nation and the traditional homelands of the Herring Pond Wampanoag tribe. We have called this land home for thousands of years. Our ancestors are buried here, and our descendants are, can still be found here today among you. Along with the other many tribal 
communities and direct descendants of other tribes throughout the Commonwealth, the history of Plymouth and the Massachusetts colony as a whole is extremely complex. What happened here on these lands impacted all Native nations across New England and spread far and wide across this country and into the Canadian Maritimes. May we never forget the sacrifices our ancestors and Indigenous people have made for us today. So, Natasuis, uh, Melissa Ferretti, Chairwoman, Sikwana Makwapakwit, Wampanak, Ka Natai Patuxit, Borndale Ut. What I've said to you in my traditional language is my name is, I am called Melissa Ferretti. I am the chairwoman of the Herring Pond Wampanoag. I am from Plymouth and Borneo. Yeah. Thank you for all of you for coming out today to the select board, for allowing us to, giving us the use of this great room. I must say, since my tenure as chairwoman and my passion for advocacy for my tribe, I have, I have seen, heard, and learned a great deal from all of you here in Plymouth. But one thing is evident. When it comes to doing what is right, no matter how divided you might all be on other matters in this town and issues that may arise or not, <laughs> the people of Plymouth always stand up and show us what is right and speak out against what is wrong. Many of you here today, and I see a few faces that I know, you ladies there. But for those of you who don't know me, I was raised here in Plymouth, in Cedarville, by an elder of my tribe, Verna Harding. Born in, my, born in 1905, Verna seen it all in Plymouth, believe me. She watched Cedarville grow. She was born on the homelands of the Herring Pond Wampanoag tribe, known today as the Valley. Uh, and it's on the backside of Great Herring Pond, if you don't know where that might be. I belong here and was raised here for one reason and one reason only, because of my direct, direct connection to this place at Patuxet, my ancestors and my tribe. I remember as a small child when the Pilgrim Nuclear Power Plant Station was being proposed and then built, <coughs> the residents were outraged. I was very young, obviously quite validated concerns, worried about what might happen to this place, Inevi inevitably defeated, nothing new here. The concerns eventually faded some and although we didn't like it, many of us didn't, we all learned to accept the power plant for what it was and with an ever watchful eye. Yep. Yet here we are today, outraged again by the thought that the same nuclear power plant station we all once accepted as safe could possibly be considering dumping millions of gallons of nuclear waste into our ocean, into our waters that sustain us. And this dirty waste could travel for miles on the backs of our fish. This could have a grave impact on not only our life ways, but all of yours. To us, the land, water, and all that live here, human and non-human, are our relatives. We have hunted, gathered, and fished these waters for thousands of years. And many of us, including myself and my family, continue to fish these waters regularly. We rely heavily on the earth, what the earth provides us for sustenance and survival. We consume these gifts from the ocean and the sea, and I feed them to my children. How could any level of waste be, re be released, referenced via scientific means, and considered safe and protective of the environment and our people. We need to heal the earth and the end environmental exploitation and destruction, not support it. Please don't poison our bay. 
uh, ho, it is done. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jim Lampert. And I plan to speak a little later in this program, but Saturday storm, to say nothing of the NRC handicaps, not the NRC this time's decision to go virtual so they wouldn't have to be here to listen to you, have upset that schedule. Unfortunately, my wife's a fortunately my wife's a member of NDCAP, and we've got to get out of here so we can go home and take part in that meeting. What I want to do today is briefly get rid of one issue, get it off the table. The NRC has told Holtec that it can dump into the bay. I've got an email from the NRC that says that. Holtec tries to convince, and a lot of people unfortunately believe, that there is nothing the state can do to stop that. That is frankly wrong. The Commonwealth can act to prevent Holtec's planned dumping if it wants to. Our job, and those of everybody listening and all the people you're going to be contacting, is to make sure that it will want to. None of you want to listen to a lot of extended legal arguments, but I'd like to make really two points. The Supreme Court has decided a total of four what I will call nuclear preemption cases, the most recent one in 2019. In each of those cases, the nuclear industry was trying to avoid state law. In each of those four cases, the nuclear industry lost. Supreme Court decisions are clear. States have authority. Companies like Holtec must comply with state laws that protect the state's economic interests. They must also pay for the damage that they cause. More important to this whole question of what can the state do is a few years ago, the Attorney General state and Holtec settled some lawsuits. In the settlement agreement, Holtec explicitly agreed, and let me quote, to comply with all applicable environmental and human health based standards and regulations of the Commonwealth. And what do those regulations and laws say? Three quick examples. They tell you it's a crime to deposit or discharge material of any kind into the water. They tell you the bays are protected ocean sanctuaries and you can't dump commercial waste into them, particularly if it adversely affect marine life. And they also tell you that Holtec is liable without regard to fault to the Commonwealth and to anybody who's damaged. Tonight, elected officials, fishing industry, Plymouth businesses, state groups, and anyone listening in and probably kind of, will tell us why Holtex must be stopped. The Attorney General and the Governor must use the Commonwealth's authority to stop them. Uh, Mary Lampert from Pilgrim Watch, but also I'm on the panel, so I have to be out of here in like two minutes. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, one could sum it up by saying uh, we want to be all very active so our bay will not become radioactive. We can do it. We can do it and we must do it because dumping a million gallons of radioactive water into the bay will be a devastation to millions of dollars of business. Particularly, you note here today, is many representatives from uh, the shellfish industry. Then we move up to the finfish. We move into tourism. All of these businesses depend that on the perception and reality that Cape Cod Bay is clean, and so we're going to do what we can to assure it will remain clean for our health, 
for the economy, and we certainly thank all the support from our elected officials. I'm looking at Senator Moran, who is a leader on this, and we're very proud to have her here to speak in person to us. We will also have videos from uh, Senator Markey and Senator Warren and Congressman Keating and a uh, representative who is running for Lieutenant Governor. And I, fortunately, I tried to pronounce her name, but I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna embarrass myself. But anyway, welcome everybody. Remember, get active to keep our bay from being radioactive. You are here. Thank you for coming. Uh, of course. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you for that warm welcome. It's really great to see everyone here tonight. This is a testament to the strength of our community. When Holtec announced the proposal to dump millions of gallons of radioactive waste into Cape Cod Bay, there was no choice but to act and act quickly. And I and other folks from Beacon Hill to the Attorney General's office to Capitol Hill are doing that. I hosted a meeting with members of the federal delegation, state partners, DEP, Attorney General, and DPH to discuss what oversight currently exists. And we dove into who is currently monitoring this. We were reassured, and we've got experts really digging into this and guiding the existing enforcement mechanisms. This was the first discussion. It certainly will not be the last. So I filed Senate 2971. This bill will make sure that no one can dump radioactive waste into our water without facing steep fines of 10 to 25,000 per violation and legal liability for any damage they cause. Later tonight, I'll be attending the NDCAP meeting to let them know exactly what I'm telling you, that we're listening, we're working hard to make sure no one pollutes our water. <laughs> Finally, and most importantly, I'm actively working on further reforms to increase your voice in decision making and to take steps that ensure that the system places our health and our safety before the industry. All of us here know this isn't the first time we've had to hold Holtec accountable for issues related to our safety and security. And I'll not stop working until I know that we don't feel an ongoing threat to our safety while in our own community. But it's not me or the delegation who should receive credit for the work. It is you. Your voices spurred quick action. You have gone above to act as watchdogs for our coasts. It's about our health and our economy. We shouldn't need to worry about pollutants literally in our backyard. The shellfish businesses shouldn't need to risk further limiting where they can fish safely. The tourism industry should not have to endure a risk to a big part of what draws people here. And our future generations should not need to worry about the health of our ocean, a protector against climate change, which is worsening due to corporate experimentation. You have raised your voices, and the next generation will be better for it. Now I'm here to listen to you. Thank you. I want to thank everyone for gathering, either virtually or in person, to speak out against the dumping of a million gallons of water, including radioactive material in Cape Cod Bay. If it wasn't for your activism before, if it wasn't for this panel hearing and our follow-up with the NRC, 
that dumping could be occurring right now because after we called the NRC, they said that the plans included possibly dumping this in the first quarter, which we're in right now. Now, to date, there've been many rationalizations, so-called justifications, false justifications as to why Holtec should be allowed to do this. And I'm not gonna discuss the scientific effects of tritium and go back and forth. We don't have to, because the justifications just don't meet the test at the outset. One of them is, well, this is okay to do now because we've done it before from time to time. Of course, that was in different batches and that was justified by the fact that plant was running and supplying a utility, a benefit to people by supplying power. Well, that justification, so-called justification, just doesn't exist now. The plant is decommissioned. It's not providing power. There's no need of doing this whatsoever. And there wasn't before. Furthermore, there'll be an argument that says, well, the effects of dumping this uh, aren't substantive. Well, without even getting into uh, the other debate on tritium, of course it's substantive. Just ask the fishing industry that's represented here. Just ask, ask the agriculture industry that's here, the tourism industry that's here, and ask the people who recreate here, live here, and enjoy the quality of life here. And you know, it's unnecessary because there is an alternative, one that's used uh, in Vermont, one that resulted in this waste being trucked away, not being introduced at all into Cape Cod Bay. And finally, they'll use the argument that this isn't harmful in any case to individuals. It's, it's not a, any more harmful than a CAT scan, an MRI, or any kind of radiological diagnos diagnostic technique because the amounts of it are so small. We'll think that argument fails on its face as well. These type of x-ray di diagnosis, they're there because that's the only alternative there is to find out if your health is in jeopardy. And without that, you could face serious ramifications. Without that, uh, you wouldn't know whether or not uh, you needed surgery, you needed treatment, or a loved one needed treatment. And importantly, when you undergo these techniques, you do something that we're not in favor of doing tonight. You have to sign for your consent. Well, our consent is not here for this. It's not necessary. There's an alternative, unlike an MRI or a CAT scan, there's an alternative to dealing with this issue. So in the absence of any justification, in the presence of substantive harm, and in a false analogy that it's safe anyways, this all fails. The solution is clear. Truck it away. Do not dump it in Cape Cod Bay. Thank you all for being here. Uh, if it wasn't for your help, this might already have been occurring. And with your help going forward, we're all gonna fight so that it doesn't occur in the future. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to join you to speak out and say, halt, hold tech and save our bay. The community surrounding the Pilgrim Nuclear Power Station, Plymouth, Cape Cod, and the South Shore have borne the environmental and public health risks of the plant for more than 40 years. So when we heard of Holtec's plans to discharge 1 million gallons of irradiated water into the Cape Cod Bay, we came together to put a stop to this proposal. From concerned residents to local businesses in the fishing, agricultural, and tourism industries, the opposition to the proposed discharge was swift and it was fierce. Here in Plymouth, we don't agonize, we organize. And because of our vocal opposition, Holtec confirmed that it would not dump radioactive water into Cape Cod Bay in 2022. But this is not 
enough. We must keep fighting to make sure no dangerous discharge ever happens, not in 2022 or any other year in the future. Holtec's proposal to dump 1 million gallons of radioactive water into Cape Cod Bay would be a discharge multiple times larger than Pilgrim has released during any prior year. Cape Cod Bay's reputation for clean and safe water is important to hundreds of local businesses and organizations. And that is why earlier this month, I joined Senator Warren and Representatives Keating and Moulton in sending a letter to Holtec opposing this discharge and urging the company to pursue alternative options for disposing of the radioactive water. The public must, must have a say in how Holtec's waste is disposed, especially when other viable options exist. Last year, during the decommissioning of a nuclear power plant in Vermont, the operator agreed to ship its radioactive water to an out-of-state facility for disposal instead of dumping the radioactive water into the Connecticut River. And that's just one option that's worth considering. And no matter what, we need to make sure that community stakeholders have a say in what happens in their town and with their water. Holtec took over the decommissioning of Pilgrim. It promised all of us that it would ensure an open and transparent decommissioning process. I heard them say that over and over again. Well, we must make sure that Holtec lives up to that promise. The community must have a say if we had to save the future of Cape Cod Bay. Thank you all for everything that you are doing. Hi, good evening. Thank you for having me here today. My name is Beth Cassoni and I'm the Executive Director of the Massachusetts Lobstermen's Association. The MLA was established in 1963 by the fishermen for the fishermen. And we have over 1,800 members fishing from Canada to Cape May, New Jersey for a wide variety of species. The MLA is actively engaged in all things ocean related. The Mass Marine Fisheries Commission, the Mass Massachusetts Ocean Acidification Commission, and the Atlantic Large Whale Take Reduction Team. In 2020, the 872 commercial lobstermen here in the Commonwealth landed over 16 million pounds of lobster with an economic value of $274 million to the local economy. Without a clean and healthy ecosystem, there would be no commercial fishing industry, which provides a sustainable, healthy, and clean protein. The Massachusetts Lobstermen's Association does not support any dumping of any toxic or hot water into the ocean. The Gulf of, Gulf of Maine, in which Cape Cod Bay is a part of, is the fastest body of water warming on the planet today. And Holtec should be ashamed to think that dumping a million gallons of toxic water is okay. Currently, within the Gulf of Maine, there are 675 commercial lobstermen landing over 13 million pounds of lobster, and they depend on the clean and healthy ecosystem. By allowing Holtec to dump any toxic water into this pristine ecosystem is unfathomable and will jeopardize thousands of jobs here in the Commonwealth. There are countless unintended consequences these actions will have and they will be unimaginable from the impacts on the North Atlantic right whale, which are here now. The latest count I got was 50 out of the 366 right whales. And they're coming. And their food source is here. And this toxic waste will jeopardize their copepods. And not only will it jeopardize their food source, the perception to the tourists that come here and depend upon clean, healthy seafood, that will be ruined. If Holtec is allowed to dump this toxic water, this could, be, this could all come to an abrupt end with no regard for the thousands upon thousands of people who depend upon a clean and healthy ecosystem here in Massachusetts. This is unacceptable and it needs to be stopped today. Thank you everyone for coming out to show your support. <laughs>
<clears throat> My name is Mark DiCristoforo, and I first want to thank Diane, Mary, Henrietta. I don't think we've met yet, but thank you guys for uh, making this very important event possible. <clears throat> I'm the director of the Massachusetts Seafood Collaborative. We represent the seafood industry here in the Commonwealth, and we fiercely oppose the dumping of even one drop of nuclear waste into Cape Cod Bay by the Holtec Corporation. First, some facts and figures for you. Seafood is a $700 million industry in Massachusetts, a full 2% of the economy. Five of our 10 most valuable ports are right here on Cape Cod Bay. And what's more is that most of the oysters that we eat come from right here in Duxbury, Kingston, and Plymouth Bays. We make our living in these waters. The toxification of them would not only harm our businesses, but would imperil the food security and health of countless Americans. The aquaculture renaissance that we've experienced here on the South Shore, it would be destroyed by even the perception of nuclear contamination. Therefore, it's a matter of the most grave seriousness that we defeat Holtec and their enablers at the NRC. But how do we, common people, how do we achieve this? It's generally agreed that from a state of Stone Age anarchy, free individuals enter the civil society primarily to ensure their protection. Therefore, the bare minimum we should expect from our government is safety. Unfortunately, the NRC, that unelected bureaucracy responsible for regulating the nuclear industry has been derelict in their duty to protect us. This is evidenced by Holtec's ability to legally dump one million gallons of nuclear waste into Cape Cod Bay. No agency properly fulfilling their obligation to the people could ever acquiesce to this. Whether the NRC has been captured by special interests or they're impotent against them, the remedy is the same, and it's what we are here doing tonight. Grassroots action by the people. This means continuously holding our public servants' feet to the fire on this issue, whether that's by ensuring the State House revises current law to block this dumping. As Senator Moran indicated, we have a piece of legislation working its way through the uh, State House right now. Or it's by ensuring that our representatives in Washington use their power on congressional committees overseeing the NRC to rein in and reassert citizen control over it. The stakes in this matter are not high for Holtec. They're not allowed to dump. They'll have to spend more money to clean up Pilgrim. And perhaps CEO Chris Singh will suffer the indignity of not being able to add another million dollar exotic car to his famous collection this year. The stakes mean everything to us. If we allow Holtec to dump their waste in our bay, our ancient maritime economy, the livelihood of so many providing nourishment to so many more might be forever lost, sacrificed entirely at the altar of greed. <laughs> the diverse group assembled here is strong. And in fact, we form a mighty fist capable of asserting our power and demanding that this environmental vandalism not be allowed to stand. But if that fist is to remain clenched, able to strike, we must persist vigilantly with this exact sort of grassroots action. Unfortunately, as soon as this issue is forgotten by common people like us, when it's no longer discussed online, in the newspapers, at the grocery store or the pub, the specter of dumping will quickly return. And we cannot allow that. We must not let the failures of past technologies, the failure of our regulatory agencies, or corporate avarice destroy our businesses, our home, and our glorious heritage, this environment. Thank you. Thank you all very much. This evening, I represent Six Ponds as the president of the organization. We're an organization of citizens, 
who have been concerned about Plymouth. We were established 60 year, 70 years ago, excuse me, uh, this year in order to look out for our environment, our town, and the neighborhood in which we live. We're, we're citizens who have been generally very active in the community through the years and have opposed generally the, the Pilgrim Station, its development, its, its construction, and now we pose the, the dumping of the waste that's in the cooling pools at the station into the Cape Cod Bay. The thing that we are concerned about is generally for our environment. We live on this one earth. There is no earth two. We've got to take this seriously and we've got to make absolutely certain that this waste is not dumped into the environment where it will contaminate the bay, it will contaminate the seafood that we depend on, and it will contaminate ourselves and our children. And goodness knows my grandchildren live here and they are the most precious things in my life. So please, please, let's work together work strenuously, continuously, until we get this thing put to bed. Get the damn waste out of here, but not in our bay. Thank you very much. Um, one thing they don't talk about when uh, Holtec is talking about dumping the water is that the uh, radioactive materials bioaccumulate. They say, oh, it's going to just dissolve and dilute, but that's not true. It gets into the sediment, it gets into the grass, the fish eat, it goes up the food chain. And as it goes up the food chain, as you know, it becomes more dangerous. We've got to stop this. If you know anything about Holtec, how many of you have looked up Holtec's background? They are a company not to trust. In fact, right now in the state of New Mexico, the Attorney General has filed a lawsuit against the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and involving Holtec in misrepresentation, misinformation, and illegal activities. And this is the company that is now decommissioning Pilgrim. We need to keep a strong eye on them because we can't trust that they're not even dumping now. So this is wonderful that everyone is out here and spreading the word that we need to halt Holtec and stop the dumping. But thank you. <laughs> Representative Tammy Govea is running for lieutenant governor. And we're so happy to have you here. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Diane. Uh, sorry that we all have to gather in this way. It's great to see my colleagues in the legislature and knowing that our colleagues at the federal level are with us as well. I'm State Representative Dr. Tammy Govea, and I share that I'm a doctor because I happen to be a doctor of public health, and my field of study was environmental health. So this is something that I have been taking a deep look at and been engaged in health policy research as part of my career as a public health professional. And I am running for lieutenant governor, and the reason why I'm running for lieutenant governor is that I believe that we deserve leaders who put our health, our well-being, and our dignity at the center of the ways that we're making decisions. And I dare say that dignity is directly tied to transparency in government, transparency when it comes to our for-profit corporations, and it also comes down to safety. And just as Diane was saying, I was doing some research on Holtec and really learning a lot about some of the very dangerous activities that they have been uh, part of that have really put some of their own employees and residents and some of the other surrounding areas that they have at great risk. And when it comes to what's happening down here in Plymouth and along the Cape Cod uh, shoreline, I'm deeply concerned by the conversation that's happening around the potential for dumping, dumping to be happening. And we already know that there have been some dumps, some illegal dumping and uh, illegal leaks that have already occurred. 
and we know that they have not been honest and transparent and that the NRC has in so many ways abdicated their responsibilities to all of you here and to those of us in the Commonwealth. We also know, or I believe, that every single person has the right to clean air, safe, clean water, to be able to enjoy recreation without threats of harm. I believe that every resident in our state deserves to live in a community and environments that are free of toxins and environmental hazards. And I also believe that we all deserve and all have the right to live in places that have strong economies. And we know that the economy down here is so dependent and reliant and interdependent with a strong fishing industry. And if we're dumping toxins into our oceans, how can we ensure that the fisheries are going to be able to stay sustainable. So that's why I'm here with all of you um, to just do all that I can to get the word out that this is something really important, that we deserve daily, real-time reporting of what's happening, that we deserve access to information, and that we deserve, and all of you deserve, to be part of the decision-making and to have a say in what's happening at this particular plant. So I thank all of you for being here. I'm proud to stand with you, and I look forward to working with you over the coming uh, weeks and months as is necessary. And again, I thank my colleagues uh, in the legislature as well. Thank you, everybody. Good evening, everybody. I would like to thank you all for the opportunity to speak this evening. My name is Suzanne Brock and I'm currently the president of the League of Women Voters of the Cape Cod area. While I represent the League with my remarks as a resident of the Cape, I also believe that I'm speaking for all Cape residents who live there and earn their livelihoods there. <clears throat> I would also add that the League of Women Voters of Massachusetts, along with a number of other statewide organizations, stand together with us in this endeavor. The history of Pilgrim nuclear power has been tumultuous, one, uh, a tumultuous one, excuse me, from disagreements on radioactive evacuation limits to inadequate security and fencing around fuel st rod storage areas, and now the possible dumping of one million gallons of radioactive contaminated water into Cape Cod Bay by the closure of the, com the closure company Holtec. <clears throat> Throughout the history of the nuclear power industry, there has never been an adequate planning process for the closure of any plants, particularly in terms of what to do with spent fuel rods and radioactive wastewater. Neither of these issues should have been left until the, any closure, but that is not a debatable issue at this time. What is debatable is what to do with the radioactive wastewater from Pilgrim Plant. Cape Cod Bay is a major source of ongoing economic potential for Cape residents. As we have previously heard, the fishing industry, the shellfish industry, the on-the-water tourist industry are all critical factors to year-round residents. Cape Cod Bay is also an important migratory passageway for marine life, including the endangered right whale, as well as many species of shorebirds. Radioactive water does not belong here or in any water that is used in a, as a possible food source or any area where human recreation takes place. Holtec has now indicated three ways to deal with the contaminated water. Discharge into the bay, transportation to another state for disposition, which is just another way to pass the responsibility for dealing with the issue on to someone else, and evaporation of the water, and then storage or transporting the radioactive residue. I believe that the most prudent method for moving forward is to store the radioactive water on site and weigh in on the options for either permanent storage on site or its removal. Since we have to store the spent fuel rods on site, the wastewater can stay here as well until our illustrious federal and state authorities take the responsibility necessary to come up with a permanent plan 
to address nuclear power, the plant shutdowns, and the responsibility that all entails. Dumping one million gallons of radioactive water into Cape Cod Bay should be taken completely off the table. In no way will Cape Cod residents or thousands of Massachusetts visiting residents accept the discharge of radioactive water into Cape Cod Bay. Thank you for your time and your willingness to become responsible citizens and protect Cape Cod Bay from degradation. This is our home. Holtec, please think about dealing with this issue as if it were your home. Thank you. Just want to let you know, and, and nice to see you, uh, Tammy, appreciate that, um, that I'm sitting here getting texts from legislat legislators that are watching. They know I'm headed to the NDCAP meeting right after this, but just a, a message from Senator Sear as well as Representative Peake. They're watching, they really appreciate all of your attendance, and they're gonna to continue to work with us. We've just, as I mentioned earlier, met with all of those regulators, and we're continuing to keep the fire under the watchful eye of not only the regulators, but all of the state and federal delegation, as well as you. So I just wanted to let you know I'd gotten out those messages. Uh, my name is Dr. Benjamin Cronin. Uh, I'm an environmental historian of southeastern Massachusetts. I wrote my doctoral dissertation on early Plymouth County and its uh, commons, its preservations of its commons. And one of the things you find if you go into the town halls, into the town clerk's offices, as I did uh, for hundreds and thousands of hours, and read all the old town meetings from the 17th, uh, 18th, 19th centuries, is the primarily the, the, the thing the town governments really are doing are preserving their common resources. Herring, they spend inordinate amounts of time, as we still do, and rightly so, on herring. They spend lots of time on salt marshes, on meadows, on firewood, uh, on bog iron, on all kinds of things uh, that are still familiar to us. And uh, by and large, they, they were pretty successful. They're still here. If you go to the Jersey Shore, it's not, right? We have a very strong commons traditions in, in New England that comes from England. There's a strong native commons tradition. It was built into Wampanoag, uh, mythology and metaphysics and understanding of the world. So even though we're talking two different societies in early uh, Plymouth County and early Cape Cod Bay uh, area, uh, they both view this as one of the most important things uh, possible. And I do think that that is a, a tradition we're continuing in uh, today, all of us who are in the room here today. A and uh, it it's one that uh, is, is supremely democratic with a small d and Republican with a small r, right? So uh, uh, both of those uh, uh, words, lowercase. So I do uh, think uh, that Holtec may have stirred a, a sleeping giant. And uh, I just want us to remember that there's really 10,000 years of human history in these waters uh, that we're standing uh, on the shoulders of. So thank you all, and, and hopefully we will, I, I, I have confidence we will all prevail. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Art Desloges. I'm a resident of Plymouth, and I'm here to represent the Massachusetts chapter of the Sierra Club. Thank you to the organizers. Thank you all for coming to speak out. The proposed plan by Haltech to dump radioactive water into our bay is egregious. It shows a wanton disregard for the welfare of the community in the entire state of Massachusetts. It's not only a direct threat to our environment. There's dozens of people at this meeting. Can someone It is also a threat to our economy. Because of our protests, we may have stopped this dump. They can't hear us. Is anyone monitoring it? I'm thinking no one's monitoring I'm going to take a second. Sure. Are we good? Diane, we good to continue? microphone. You got it on? Yes, it's on. You can hear? 
Yep, what's working Okay. Because of our protests. In the meantime, I'm great to be among you all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you for bearing with it. Because of our protests, we may have stopped this dump. But because Holtec retains the rights to future dumps, we remain at risk. Who would want a vacation here? Who would want to buy property here? Who would think about eating our shellfish or our food? We need to do more to protect the environment. Our mission at the Sierra Club is to do just that, to preserve the Earth's ecosystems. Haltac, nor any company, should have the right to unilateral radioactive dumping here or anywhere. We call on the Baker administration, the Attorney General, and the Massachusetts legislature to institute rules and regulations to permanently stop Holtec from radioactive dumping. Thank you. I have something from the Department of Environmental Protection from the state of Massachusetts of the Reading Physicians for Social Responsibility. That sounds so good. You might want to hear. Holtec has indicated that it wishes to discharge this radioactive water into Cape Cod Bay in batches of approximately 20,000 gallons each. That's from the Department of Environmental Protection. Holtec is planning to dump. And if they think they're not convinced us, they're going to wait a year and think about it. That's not going to happen. They're planning to dump, and we have to stop. Okay. This is a uh, statement from the Physicians for Re Social Responsibility. Um, Anna Baker um, is the executive director. Greater Boston Physicians for Social Responsibility supports the efforts of Pilgrim Watch and Cape Town Windows to raise awareness about the threat of radiation exposure to de decommissioning markets in nearby residents during the use of effluents into Plymouth, Kingston, and Duxbury Bays and Cape Cod Bay. There is no safe dose of ionizing radiation, and any increased exposure should be avoided whenever possible. There have been harmful releases of radiation from Pilgrim nuclear reactor operations in the past, and any additional exposures during decommissioning activities are unwarranted. Anna Baker, MPH, uh, Executive Director of the Greater Boston Physicians for Social Responsibility. Great. Okay, thank you for the opportunity to stand before you and speak. Uh, my name is Paul Quintal, and I'm a lifetime resident of Plymouth, and I've been running passenger boats uh, out of Plymouth Harbor for very close to 50 years. Um, I own a business called Plymouth Cruises, and um, over the years, I have done many fishing trips, whale watch excursions, and many other boat rides for people, you know, many of them within sight of the Pilgrim plant. And uh, during the off-season, I've had a, uh, a history of commercial fishing as well. I've spent my life on Cape Cod Bay. I am very upset that we are here tonight having to have this meeting and understanding that something like this could even be a possibility in the realm of common sense. So I am particularly outraged that we have to be here. I'm a 25-year member of the Plymouth Harbor Committee. Mass Lobstermen's Association and the Plymouth Harbor um, Lobstermen's Association as well. I'd like to make two statements, uh, the first of which is um, representing uh, a colleague. Her name is Regina Amutis Sylvia, and Regina is in charge. She's a director of the Whale and Dolphin Conservancy, and they have an office here in Plymouth, and she's the director for North America. It's a worldwide operation. She wanted to be here to speak to you tonight, and I said I would read a statement from her. So my next words are from Regina's um, uh, paragraphs. And Regina states, I am providing these comments on behalf of the Whale and Dolphin Conservation, a global organization whose North American headquarters are located here in Plymouth, Massachusetts. The recovery of the critically endangered North Atlantic right whale is a priority program for the work of WDC, Whale and Dolphin Conservancy. 
Cape Cod Bay is an important winter and spring feeding ground and nursery area for the fewer than 360 remaining right whales. Between 25 to 40% of the entire population has been sighted in Cape Cod Bay during a single survey day. Since 2016, the entirety of Cape Cod Bay has been designated under an Endangered Species Act as right whale critical habitat. According to NOAA, NOAA, once critical habitat is designated, federal agencies must consult with us to ensure that any activities they authorize, fund, or carry out are not only likely to destroy or adversely modify the critical habitat. It is our understanding that no such consultation has taken place. The 2012 consultation only considered facility operations and not decommissioning of this plant. And the post shutdown decommissioning activities report for Pilgrim Power Plant does not consider the type of discharge proposed by Holtec. As a result, a new permit for discharge is required as it, a Section 7 interagency co consultation under the Federal Endangered Species Act. Given the imperiled, imperiled status of the species, we are strongly opposed to any discharge that could impact to right whales or their habitat. We further point out that Massachusetts state law prohibits the discharge of untreated sewage from boats and into Cape Cod uh, Commonwealth waters, including Cape Cod Bay. It is therefore inconceivable that radioactive waste should be considered as an allowable in this critical habitat. And that is Regina as mutist Sylvia. The, the next statement is my personal um, thoughts and, and ideas. And I have three grandchildren, that, and they live in the Manamid area, about two miles from the plant. And they swim regularly at Whitehorse Beach. So for me, the concept of dumping toxic waste in Cape Cod Bay is personal. And Plymouth Harbor, uh, uniquely, was the first coastal community in Massachusetts to initiate what we call an NDA, no discharge area. When I was a kid, we ran passenger boats, you dumped your waste right through and went to the open ocean. Since that time, we have smartened up over 50 years that I've been around here, and we no longer do that. We put it into a tank and we discharge it to a shoreside, shoreside um, discharge area. And it goes into the, the public system, not into our waters. So we've learned something over 50 years. And for me, it, it's, it's just unconceivable that we, we're having this meeting here today. And as Plymouth was the first to initiate an NDA, it's now migrated to all seaside communities here in Massachusetts, including Cape Cod Bay. I am asking for help from our senators, our congressmen and representatives to support the effort to keep Cape Cod Bay clean and free of radioactive waste. Thank you. We have just a few more minutes because the NDCAP meeting will be starting at 6.30. And for those of you who don't know what that is, that's the Nuclear Decommissioning Citizens Advisory Panel. And we had organized this event because they have their meeting right here at 6.30. And they're not gonna be here tonight. They've gone virtual. Yes. Yep. They don't regulate radio radioactive materials. EPA, yeah. No, nope. Clean Water Act, no. Actually, um, yeah, that's a problem. That's a problem, yeah. And one thing that is not talked about when Holtec says they're going to dump water is that, and they're going to um, filter it, you cannot filter tritium. And tritium is in the water, and it goes through the placenta into the fetus and causes genetic damage for generations to come. This is criminal. This is extremely criminal. All for money. All for profit. All for profit. Yep. Yep. Um, it also, again, too, one of it, it 
bioaccumulates in the environment. Um, it's just it's just criminal. Yeah, thank you so much. I, I've actually been asked uh, by Diane earlier, um, Matoi Monroe, who is um, part of the United American Indians of New England, had wrote a statement, and she's not here today. So Diane had asked me to do it, and uh, Matoi had also given me permission. So I will um, I will offer you that. So uh, it stated January twenty second. United American Indians of New England, UAINE, strongly opposed the proposed Holtec International, the company overseeing the decommissioning of the Pilgrim Nuclear Power Station to release nearly 1 million gallons of possible radioactive waste into Cape Cod Bay. Water containing radioactive substances has, severely has a severely detrimental effect on human health as well as to marine life and ecosystems. UAINE believes that the threat, sorry, this isn't my statement, the threat posed by radioactive water to the fragile marine ecosystems in Cape Cod is reason enough to reject whole text proposal and the threat to human health and the radioactive water possess possesses offers even more justification for the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection and the Federal Environmental Protection Agency to refuse to allow potentially radioactive water to be dumped into the bay. We are especially concerned about this because nationally, indigenous people have often been disproportionately impacted by radioactive waste as there are nuclear waste disposal sites and uranium mines on or near tribal lands. In addition to the long lasting effects of the Church Rock uranium mine spill on the Navajo Nation, the worst nuclear disaster in the history of the United States, the possible effects of disposal of radioactive water in Cape Cod Bay on the Herring Pond Wampanoag tribe of Plymouth, the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe and the Aquina Wampanoag tribe and other Native American tribes in Cape Cod in the Cape Cod region are of great concern, as is the potential for radioactive water to harm non-Indigenous communities of Cape Cod. Although a spokesman for Holtec has claimed that the water is, will not contain any pollutants, Radiation is not classified as a pollutant by the EPA or DEP. Despite the significant health and environmental threats posed by radioactive water, the dumping of water, including radioactive water into the ocean from decommissioned power plants is a distressingly common phenomenon. Despite the effects of radio radiation on marine life and on human health, on November 7, 2021, 7,200 gallons of water from the Pilgrim Station were released into Cape Cod Bay when contractors pumped water into a storm drain that empties into the ocean. Although Holtec claims that the water was not radioactive, many nuclear power experts say that this accidental discharge of water proves that there is not sufficient safeguards in place to prevent releasing radioactive or otherwise polluted water into Cape Cod Bay. UANIA believes that any water disposal option with the potential to release substances and other pollutants into the bay should be rejected in favor of a safer disposal option and does not, and does not threaten human health and stability of marine life and, I don't know, option that does not, sorry, threaten human health and the stability of marine life and ecosystems in Cape Cod. We urge the DEP and the EPA to do the right thing and insist that Holtec International dispose of the water from Pilgrim Nuclear Power Station in a more responsible manner than simply dumping it into Cape Cod Bay. We also call upon, upon the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to ensure that nuclear power plants such as Pilgrim that are decommissioned 
behave in a responsible way in doing so that is respectful to all life and the health of the environment. Thank you from UNIA. Okay, just, just to wrap up everyone, thank you. We are asking Holtec to be responsible and take dumping off the table immediately. Let's all go to the NDCAP meeting where Holtec is and make them hear our voices too. And Holtec, if you're listening, we want you to stop the dumping, take the dumping off the table tonight. All right, thank you for the community sign up. Sign up on our email sheet. Thank you all for being here.